Welcome to BBC Podcast. Tap it in with Tunchi again. Today we're going to get in the manosphere and we're going to holler at Ricky Red Pill, man, pick his brain and see where his knowledge is at for us. Let's get it. Yeah, um, I am Ricky Redfield. I'm a Redfield researcher, man. Um, we study, uh, you know, love and relationship, the uh, inner dynamics of that. And we try to, uh, what we tried to do was figure out how to fix it all. Uh, in the Redfield space, there's a lot of people, excuse me, there's a lot of people complaining and uh, bitching about what's wrong but nobody seems to have the answers. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we set out to find the answers and we did, we found all the answers. We found out everything that was really wrong and we know how to fix it. And that, that comes along with leadership. Um, you know, it's, it's system order and structure. I can't turn my phone off. I'm not good with technology, obviously. Um, (laughs) It's system, order, and structure, man. Uh, that's what any man brings to a household also, right? Correct. And so that's basically what we do, man, and it's exciting. Okay. So how can we start it off, man, like the whole content that Ricky Red Pill is bringing to the Red Pill space, just how is it different from everyone else's? Uh, the content itself is, the honestly, they, we haven't really gotten to our real content yet. Oh really? Um, you know, but yeah, the okay. shorts that we do, mm-hmm. those were just our social media posts, right? Okay. Um, those were just to get people excited about what we were about to do. Okay. So it's very interesting how those how those blew up. Yeah. yeah. Uh interesting how that happened because didn't expect it at all. Um, but we have a way of doing things here that it's quality, you know, over quantity. Yeah. So everything, you know, I'm, I'm a huge red pill fan. I'm a huge YouTube fan. I watch everybody, uh, you know, been into it for years. So, okay. um, I kind of knew, you know, what it took to come in and dominate in a way, so to speak. Um, I didn't want to come in with a product that wasn't with anything that isn't that's where I turned it off. <laughs> didn't want to come into the game with anything that wasn't top notch. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, I set out to say, hey, you know, everything we do has to be. So even when it came to doing short form videos, uh, YouTube shorts, whatever, um, even when it came to that, it was like, got to do something incredible that is mind blowing to people or that people will get a lot of value from that is very artistic and that they can, um, you know, really learn from stuff like that. So. We have this unique combination of, I think it's a great combination of mm, education, comedy, different things. But actually, when I started my channel, it was meant to be a network, right? It wasn't really about Ricky Red Pill himself. It was actually called Ricky Red Pill TV. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually, we're building up shows is what we're doing. So it's it's a lot of hard work every day. Um, Building up so many shows is extremely difficult, you know, working on a drama called Recoria, working on, we have a late show, game show, this, everything you would see on regular television is what we're trying to bring to this uh, channel. Okay. So it's a lot of work, but uh, we're excited, man. That's good. So you're laying down a lot of variety then. Yeah, a lot of variety and everything that we do, we just want to make sure that nobody else is doing it. Yeah. Uh, it's about being, for us, it's about being unique and bringing the, the, utmost of quality to the red pill space. Um, quality is key here. Okay. I can appreciate and that. Great information. Uh, 
yeah, we want to make sure that we're bringing perfect information um, with at least mistakes as we can possibly have. Okay. So what do you see? What's the biggest problem with love and relationship nowadays? Um, okay. So the biggest problem in love and relationships is actually called um, Recorian offset. Mm. And this is the offset between men and women. So I do have a slideshow here to show you. Okay. Yeah, because so. the last podcast I went on, man, it was like, or it was my first podcast ever. Mm. And, you know, one thing that people don't know, I don't want to be doing this. I'm not a YouTube personality or this and that. I'm kind of forced to do this mm. um, by our circumstance here. I can't stand the spotlight at all. Mm, okay. I can't stand to you know, be out there. I mean, I'm totally, I'm camera shy and everything. It's not really my thing, but uh, what we're doing for people is so important that I actually have to put myself out there. So um, I didn't really get to express myself, I think on that podcast, like, like I wanted to. Um, I mean, I watched it back, man. It was super cringy. Um, Mm -hmm. There was a lot of mistakes made, things I couldn't, points I couldn't get across. And I think that being able to express how I really think um, and what's really going on is, is important uh, for people to see really what's going on. I, I think, you know, I am known right now for, you know, that we do different funny shorts and stuff. But what yeah. we've actually done is everybody talks about the Matrix uh, and has for years, and it is at play. Uh, what we've actually done here is crack the code, and that's what's so important. I wanted to give your audience and everybody watching a very unique experience today where they can really see, I think for the first time, uh, people are really going to be able to see clearly what's going on. We spent a long time working on a very special uh, um, a slideshow for you. Okay. Literally while I was late today, right? <laughs> <laughs> so good. Slideshow, slideshow was something else. <laughs> uh, did I had to add an extra one at the last minute. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Is that working? The, yeah. Oh, man. Um, so basically... The, the number one problem in love and relationships is Recorian offset. It's an offset between men and women. Uh, Recorian offset major is societal. It's everybody in America or the world that it affects. And Recorian offset minor is within a relationship, right? Okay. So when you have this, um, a man and a woman together, basically in a perfect relationship, or a, let's say a good relationship, they're kind of 50-50. Say out of, on a scale of one to 10, they're both fives, right? Okay. Let's say they're both fives and they're, and they have an equal, very equal relationship. A bad relationship is if the woman is a six and the guy is a five, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't feel as needed. He feels like she's a little too good. She feels like she's too good. It's a mess. A great relationship for a man and a woman or societal standard is when the man is a six and she's a five. Therefore, um, her hypergamy is filled up with him being just a little bit better and he feels more like a man because he's taking care of a woman that's uh uh that needs him okay. so what we have in society is oh man i have to explain this in a different way um i think what we haven't well not think uh what we've discovered is we have a societal offset um 1920s women became um able to really get into the workplace and make money Mm-hmm. And that, and in society, say men were a five, women were a five out of ten. That took women up to six. It took them up a notch, and it also knocked men down in the same process because now you have the situation where men are making less money. Okay. And so now women are sixes, men are fours. Then you get we had about forty years of that, and the only time that it seemed okay is when men went to war. We lost hundreds many thousands of men Mm -hmm. at war over the next 40 years at different stages. And so men became valuable again, but there was only a few men who come back from war plus the guys who were here in the States already making money. So then it seemed like it was hot. So we had the baby boom, um, which was very tricky, but we went through 40 years of that 1960s, early 1960s, I think it was 1960. Actually, we get birth control. Um, That was the next big hit. Birth control takes women up to a seven now. Because okay. now they don't have to respect men even more, and they don't have to respect themselves even more. Okay. So now in society, men are a four, and women are now a seven. So you can see this great divide happening. 1970 hits, we get, uh, what do you call that? Uh, oh, the divorce boom. Now with sexual promiscuity for women starting to be okay, and they're getting money, 
uh, growing into the new economies, uh, deindustrialization, a lot of things happened. And basically that took so 1970 to 72, we had a real great, our first really divorce boom. Um, that took women up another step or knocked men down another notch. Either way you want to look at it, might have done a little bit of both because men generally don't leave their marriages, right? Um, yeah. Women will generally uh, yeah. be the ones to do that. Right, initiate it and follow through. And so then you get to 1974 and five, and then you have a real, um, the law set forth dramatic uh, child support. And mm. that, that really, you know, it get, began to peak in 1975. So here we go again. If you mix the divorce with the child support, men are knocked down to at least the three. Women go up to seven, eight. Um, and this just continues. I think uh, the next one. Oh, man. All this was in my slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one goes up to, man, I wish I could show that. Um so the next one goes up to, um, I think it was, uh, what was it? Oh, the next thing happens in the early 2000s where we got social media, right? Mm -hmm. The internet didn't, didn't affect everything as much, but social media killed us. Um, it wasn't really Facebook first. It was really more MySpace than Facebook, right? Okay. Um, once that started happening, it was an absolute disaster for families in America, loving relationships, mm -hmm. and the final nail in the coffin that took women to a nine, or not a nine, I'm sorry, that takes women to 10, and I'll explain that in a minute, that takes women to 10 and keeps men down now at like a one in their minds, the average man. So a man who was a five is now a one, mm -hmm. and a woman who was a five is now thinks she's a 10. Okay. And that's because dating apps, dating apps in the, in the 2010 was a nail in the coffin. Mm. So now we have this situation to where, you know, guys are like, why does this chick think she's a 10 or why do most of these women think yeah, they're a 10? Yeah, all the time. They legitimately <laughs> have good. Yeah, they have good reason to, to know that they have good reason to think that um, in their in a woman's mind, most of them feel like they're 10. And so. Um, with that being the case, um, you also have this thing to where there's. There's four, there's only four things that a man can get from a woman, right? Or that a woman can get from a man. It's only four things. And I learned this from a great red pill lady. I've mentioned her before. Her name's the Crimson Cure. You might be familiar with her yeah. out of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she's brilliant. Uh, I consider her one of the red pill masters, although she specializes in uh, the black community, African-American women, yeah. uh, different things like that. But she is an absolute master. She talked about the four P's. Now, over here at the researchers, we call it the four pros. Um, the first one being procreation. I mean, they're, they're not in any order, really. You have uh, a man is, can give a woman his provision, right? Yeah. He can give a woman his problem solving. He can give a woman his, um, man, uh, you do have procreation. And you have another one that is, uh, 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 see, I knew I wouldn't be able to bring all this out in my head. Oh, man. Um, four P's. I'll think about the other one in a minute. Okay. But basically, um, what happened? The the provision part, like we just talked about, was broken. So then women can get money, not just from jobs. Let's we really have to understand that a lot of women don't work job jobs, right? Yeah. What a lot of women are doing is just selling themselves or selling their beauty, mm -hmm. right? Correct. And we're seeing that uh, very heavy. I don't think people understand how serious this, this problem has gotten. Mm -hmm. But women are getting money any which way they can and will. Uh, you have women on OnlyFans right now making fifty million a year, right? Fifty-two yeah. million a year, like a, a million dollars industry, yeah. um, a million dollars a week. Yeah, yeah, it's it's incredible. I mean, that's one in, that's one woman, you know. Uh, I think Bad Baby made that last year, year before yeah. last. So yeah. um, she literally made a million dollars a week doing that. So we have a serious issue here, to where women don't need men for their provision. So then, oh, here it is, protection. So then you go to protection. Um, so there's only four things that make men valuable to women. Then you go to protection. And when you go to protection, you have this thing to where um, they don't really feel, since they have their own provision and they can hang out with a bunch of different guys that make them feel safe, they can call the police, they have alarm systems, you know, uh, their own apartments, houses in many cases. 
they don't need a man's protection anymore. They have the police and government system, different things to where they really feel safe. So now you take away the man's protection. And then you have the man's problem solving. Well, of course, most of these women, where it doesn't matter if they have a corporate job or work at McDonald's or, or, or selling themselves in some way, they really feel like they can solve their own problems and don't need a man for that, right? Yeah. So now they don't need our problem solving. So what's the only thing left? The only thing left at the end of this is a man's procreation. That, and, mm-hmm. and under procreation, you have his sex, um, his sex with her and ability to create children. Mm. Um, since these women don't need all these other things, honestly, that's all they need. That's all that's left. They can't procreate by themselves. So, as and here's what's been happening. So remember, the first three uh, pros are now scratched off. Uh, modern women don't need men. Mm-hmm. So, so what that actually does, if men and women start at 100 percent, what that does is knock knock men down to 25 percent and take women up to 175 percent. Mm. Um, okay. If they both started at 100, because each P you take off adds 25 to the women's and takes 25 from the men. Okay. And so now you have the situation to where only procreation is left. So men think this is the tricky part for men. And I need all any, I need all men to please understand this. This is where you're getting crushed at. You are already gotten crushed by all the other stuff. They're, they're, they're really killing men out here or, you know, in this dramatic way. Mm. And I, and I'm, I'm, I'm really being literal by this, right? Mm. Uh, there's a lot of, self-deletion, men that don't know where to go, what to do. And we'll talk about all that in a minute. Yeah. But basically, when it comes to procreation, she only needs two things. She wants men that she can make love to. And she also, most of them end up wanting kids. Mm-hmm. So if you're a young man and you're good looking or you're on top of your game or whatever, they're looking for, for kids from you. They don't really want you like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're looking to have kids. So the, the entire game nowadays for women has turned into a big finesse game. That's everything is about finessing men because they don't need us anymore. They mm-hmm. truly don't. Okay. Um, need is not there. That, and you'll hear them say it every day. I don't yeah. need no man. Well, um, I, I want you. I don't need you. They live by it. Mm-hmm. And they rightfully so. It's not even their fault. It's not women's fault. They didn't earn it. They didn't go to war with men to get it. What they did, it was given to them by a system which we refer to as the matrix, uh, the system is, is doing it. Our women are being mistreated and led down that road, and there's literally nothing they can do about it right now. Um, excuse me. There's literally nothing that they can do about it right now. Mm. So basically, the other part of the procreation is, like I say, they, they want the, the sexual activity, and they want the children. But they don't really want the guy. And, and that's part of a lot of guys get confused. Like she had a kid with me. Now she's cheating on me. Now she's running off. Well, that's why she never really wanted or needed you like that. Okay. She just needed a kid. Mm. And the kid also allows her to get more provision and sympathy and all kind of other things. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's really what we're dealing with in society right now. When you also have that procreation part. That will also cause her to use older men for money. Right. Mm. So she. She wants to have sex and children with younger men, um, with the younger alphas, right? Alpha, alpha C, beta need. Yeah. Then with the older men who have money, she then wants him to come in and support and take care of her. So right now, procreation is also scratched off the list. So as me and you speak today, we literally have no, no, um, men are, men are really just kind of worthless, uh, in society when it comes in just the eyes of women right now. Like existing, you pretty much. Yeah, we're existing and it's uncomfortable because the flip side of that is women don't need men and they actually don't right now, but men need women. Mm. We, we, the only reason men go try to get a bunch of money, this and that is so that we can give to women, support a family, support her. Um, we, our problem solving is for her and a family. Everything that a man is, is built to build country and environment and take care of a family. And that's being t- been taken away from men. Uh, we no longer, you know, generally I think men want to be two things. They want to be husbands and they want to be fathers at the end of the day. Now, not maybe not when he's 20 or 22, but as he goes through life, that builds and that's being taken away. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not able to do either right now. And that's the problem that we're facing. Okay. 
That's that's actually really deep, man. I actually never even looked at it like none of that that way. That especially the four pros, that's that really makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Um Yeah, it's um like I say, I had I had those slides for you, man, but basically yeah. we'll get to all that in a little while. But okay. basically there is a huge difference between, you know, me and what I do, what we do here, and everybody else in Redfield. There yeah. it's it's ridiculous what I'm seeing, and I'm sure you got some questions about some of that stuff too. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um next is gonna be what is the biggest problem in this red pill space right now? Like where, where's everything crossing and not everybody's lining up and meeting, pushing the same message. Um, that happens. Um, that tends to happen when there's no leadership, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like a, a young lady out here in the streets that never had a father. She's going to do all kind of crazy stuff. Young men too, you know, young men and women out in the streets with, uh, when you're raised without discipline, like I say, system order, system order and structure. When you're raised without that, um, you're going to be pretty wild. And that's what's going on in Redfield. We have no clear leadership. There's no leader. Um, mm. I, I said that on a, the first on a thought cast when I was on there yeah. and people thought I was talking crazy. I'm not talking crazy. Anybody can see it. It's a fact, you know, and this is the only time I'm going to say fact this episode. Um, but um, you can see it. It's, it's very clear. And, and so what you have is the red pill is in this wild west stage. Everybody's just coming out saying what they feel saying what they want and that is actually that's not a you know that's a feminine trait feelings and it's mm. not a masculine trait mm. um structure is masculine order is masculine um so that's the biggest problem in a red pill space since you have that you have a bunch of people throwing out their dumb ass opinions mm -hmm. and nobody it doesn't help anything and then you have people entering a space that get popular see being popular doesn't make you a leader being rich doesn't make you a leader being um being smart or brilliant doesn't make you a leader what makes you a leader is when you can see the circumstances you bring systems to the forefront um you can add that order and you build structure and that's what i do that's what we do here and so and who else who else could even be qualified to do this or or so boldly um come and call for that position than somebody who has the answer nobody else has the answer we have all of the answers here and that's what's incredible and um, I'm just willing to take that. They they acted as if I come in asking for the crown or the throne. Yeah. I'm not asking for it. <laughs> I'm here to take it. Um, um, there's there's no, and yeah, there's going to be some battles, but I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for those heads to roll. You know, um, I see some people are smart enough to to stay quiet and see what's about to happen. I see other people had to jump right out and uh, had a lot to say, um, and have shown a lot of disrespect. But then I also feel like they've done that with other people and they're just, um, they always do that. So I'm trying not to take it personal. Yeah. But um, that's the biggest problem in Red Pill, lack of leadership. So then you have these characters pop up and they're, some of them are racist. Some of them are, you know, anti, anti-Semitic type people. Some of them are sexist, literally, you mm -hmm. know, um, that's one problem. Another problem that we have, uh, there's, there's a, the list of problems in Red Pill is many. It's what I have to keep track of every day so that we can solve them uh, and clean up Red Pill because Red Pill is the only thing that can save us. It's, we're yeah. in big trouble. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. As men, we're in big trouble. Yeah, as, as women are in big trouble, but as a country, United States, if we don't fix this, we're, we're going down. That, that is, that's securely a fact. Mm. The numbers have been run. We are absolutely done if we don't fix this. We're going to be so, so weak and under attack um, from many sides, right? Mm -hmm. Just like a household without good leadership. That household comes under all types of attack, financial, physical. There's just too many things. So we need to get this uh, together. So another big problem within the Red Pill space, I would say, man, is um, it's not woman friendly on a lot of levels. Mm, okay. Um so you you differ from what, hear guys, what these guys are saying. Yeah, big time, okay. big time. Well, it's the it's worlds of difference. <laughs> the the level of difference is huge. I've heard you mention um, that you believe that like the men and women are equal on a on a certain status. When, men and women um, have always been equal. Okay. And men and women. Um, are still equal. What, what, what the matrix has tried to do has tried to tell women basically that you're not equal to a man unless, unless you basically 
do what men do mm. and try to tell men, some men go for it, they are out there, that you're not equal to a woman unless you do what women do. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely ridiculous. Women are born perfect, all of them. Every woman is born perfect, just how, just how she's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And there is not just one, but many different perfect matches or mates for her. She never has to lift, uh, she never has to lift a finger or go to work or anything. Her beauty is what sells her, her kindness, um, her nurturing, different things like that. Mm-hmm. So, and, and just with that, what she's born with, and if she can stay not to be so aggressive or masculine or something, um, she's perfectly equal to some man. Everybody's, men and women, yeah, they've always been equal. Um, so a fight for women's empowerment, mm-hmm. not, not rights necessarily, but a fight for women's empowerment, as, as we just discussed, that's what got us in this mess. Uh, you want to empower them to work. You want to empower them to do this and this and this. Mm-hmm. And now you have this dramatic offset where the women that are in society right now look at the average woman, looks at the average man, and is not attracted to him. She mm-hmm. thinks she's better. Yeah. <laughs> because of what's going on. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's crazy. But what, yeah, what the matrix has done is made women, has made men very unattractive mm. and has made women be- believe that they're much better because there's always a trade off, right? Mm-hmm. It's always a trade. Um, say, say you look at a tree. Uh, you have the top of the tree that everybody sees, but they don't, a lot of people don't really think about because you don't see it, yeah. that the root is the other half of the tree. It's underground, right? Mm-hmm. The root is just as big as the tree that you see. Sometimes it's bigger. Um, this equality between men and women that's natural, the man is the part of the tree that you see. He's usually the part that goes out into society, does things, works. When the storm comes, the top of the tree, he's the one that faces it, right? Yeah. Um, she is safe underground, nurturing, uh, getting the uh, minerals or nutrients mm-hmm. that feed him and that feed their offspring, their kids. Mm-hmm. Um, say certain branches in the front of the tree would be the daughter. It's a family. It's a recording family tree. It's something that we actually work on and have here. When she starts, to, when that root, now think about this. When a root, when a tree starts to uproot, the, the root starts to come up and wants to be like the tree, what happens to the family? That's why everything. Much or the does. man. Yeah, the man. <laughs> that's that's what falls. Yeah, the the man, yeah, he's gonna fall. He so say you have a family unit mm. and the wife keeps wanting to come up and do all the manly stuff. She wants that root, her as the root of the family. She yeah. is the home. Right. Women don't understand it. There is no home without that woman. There's no household. Yeah. And so when she comes up and tries to and starts coming out the ground, the top of the tree, the man, has no choice but to start leaning, and eventually yeah. he falls if she pushes too hard. And that's why we see so much divorce and shattered homes. I mean, this is, it's quite ridiculous, but for some reason, for me, most of it has been common sense Mm. uh, to figure it out. And we just knew that we had to bring this to the forefront, everything that we've discovered. So this is part of what you... Oh, um, I don't know if I answered your question, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, this, This is what you... I mean, what you just gave me an example of right now, is that something that you see what's something that's like a very big problem in relationships nowadays. Yeah, it is the problem. Uh, everything I'm explaining is the problem. There is no other problem. Cheating is not the problem. I- I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, everything comes down in loving relationships. Everything comes down to what's called Rikorian value, right? Mm-hmm. And that is how the other person is valued or how you're valued in relationship. That's why we do the one to 10 scales and all that. Um, when a man or a woman feels like they're not valued in a relationship, what they do is they, they get frustrated Mm. and men will usually go out and cheat because he feels it an option. If he gets too frustrated with it, Mm. Uh, he finds affection or whatever somewhere else. Women don't feel the same option as easily to go out and physically cheat. Um, what they do is usually leave or try if they physically cheat, that usually means they're out the door, right? Yeah. Women cheat to leave yeah. men cheat to stay, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, men cheat to stay in a relationship. Women cheat to leave it. Um, so recording offset is the problem. We have, that's, that's why I'm here. We need, we're, we, it's, this is political. Um, it can start on the ground with men and women, educating women, getting them to come to the red pill side, Mm. Um, not the manosphere. I'm actually debating right now if the manosphere, if the manosphere should even exist in attachment to red pill itself. 
I'm mm. debating right now mm. if PUA should even be a part of the red pill community. Mm. Um, if you're in red pill and you're talking about game and how to have sex with multiple women or something like that, <laughs> I, I don't think you belong here. Mm. I think you need to have your own uh, community somewhere. Yeah, I can see what you're uh, Red about. pill is a weapon. Makes sense. Right? Yeah. You're part of the problem if you're doing that. You're That's not part true. of the solution. Misleading. Right? There's some people yeah. who have a whole lifestyle program based on that. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, what I understand. Were you no, I understand what you're saying. Like how the PUA, like it's it's not in a it's a leadership in a whole different uh, criteria. It's not like red pill is here for for life to to direct and and lead life like the PUA is something extra that's that's like offset that I understand what you're saying it, sh it shouldn't be in I mean yeah PUA and and I've been a PUA before I've been a MGTOW mm. before I've been an MRA I've been everything in red pill I've I went through all those stages mm. um basically here's the way you look at it and here's how my mind works to break things down and that's why I'm able to see so much of this and how I can see the PUA is actually wrong for red pill mainly it's because Okay, say red pill is a weapon. Say feminism is a weapon, right? Mm -hmm. Right now we're going through this because feminism has been used against the American people mm -hmm. and people all around the world. So feminism is a weapon. And that weapon, if used incorrectly, can help, or if used correctly, can help many. That weapon, if used incorrectly, can hurt many, destroy families and uh, hurt people. Same thing with red pill. Red pill is our greatest weapon in fixing everything. But just like a gun, when using a gun to protect your home, to protect your family, to enforce law, to maybe do certain types of hunting sometimes, it's a proper way to use a gun. Nobody's going to complain too much. But if you simply use the gun all the time to commit crime and do what's wrong, then it's a misuse of the gun and it's crime. Correct. And so when a PUA, somebody takes red pill knowledge and says, we're going to use this to defile women, then I probably have a problem with that. Right. OK. So I think here in the future, um, you know, me and some PUAs may uh, go to war. I'm not having it. Mm. I think most of them have to go. Those days are over. So um, that's my view on that part. I forgot where we were at. Besides that, I get I go off on a tangent a <laughs> lot. <laughs> no, you're good, man. It's, it's, it's all for the good message. Uh, we're pretty much at uh, like the biggest mistakes that uh, men and women are making, like in relationship. Um. The biggest mistakes that men and women are making in relationships, I think the number one mistake is thinking that the other, the opposite sex loves like they do. Men make the mistake of thinking that women love like they do, and they don't. And women make the mistake of thinking men love like they do. Um, two totally different things. Mm. I made a comment um, on one of these podcasts or on a podcast mm -hmm. uh, when I was on there that, that, you know, and I was wasted on there. But uh, that women don't uh, commit in a relationship. And what I meant was, you know, I meant what I said exactly. Okay. Um, but they don't they don't naturally commit. It's, it's against their nature to naturally commit. Now, if you have a religious woman, mm -hmm. she'll commit due to her honoring her marriage vow or her religious uh, choice. Right. Okay. Um, a man, a man doesn't submit in a relationship. He can't naturally submit. Um, a man commits and a woman submits. If a man does submit in a relationship, it's because he's being forced to. And so right now in society, we're actually seeing a lot of men submit in relationships. And it's disgusting. It's gross to look at. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing that because they're broke. She has money. He needs a mama. Men are being destroyed out here. Manhood is being destroyed. A lot of people say there's a war against masculinity. That's an absolute lie also. There's not a war against masculinity. If there was, they wouldn't be cramming so much masculinity down the throats of our women, making them masculine. I mean, the Megan Stallions of the world and so, and so forth. So the war is not against masculinity. The war is, is strictly against men. Mm. It's against men so that they can utilize our women. Okay. See, when you take a woman out the household, instead of her being a wife and using her and giving her sexual, sexual access to her husband and her work, um, her work value to her husband and family and their family business, you pull her out the home. Now her work value is working for the king. A, a lot of the problem that we're having with this is women aren't working for their family anymore. They're all going to work at the king's palace. The king can afford to pay them wages, excuse me, 
for those hours worked. And those women are now free of men. When they're free of their man, they now her sexual access goes to the king or whoever she chooses, right? Mm. That's what we're going. That's what's happening. Our mm-hmm. women are basically being used, and it's destroying families. Uh, but I, I left your original question. What was it again? Oh, the biggest problem. Yeah, uh, the biggest problem. Between men and women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's what they get wrong. They think each other loves like they do. I think that is the number one problem. They get it. They, you know, women can't understand men and men can't understand women. And that's what Red Pill's here for. That's yeah. that Red Pill is literally here to fix the number one problem Correct. and many other problems. But that is what we're about so that people know the truth. That's what Red Pill stands for, the truth. Right. Mm. So that is why we're here to fix that problem. Get women to understand how men think, why they are, how they are, what their true nature is, and to get men to understand how women think and how uh, why why they're the way that they are. Okay. So tell me who with Ricky Red Pill believes you can just give me one. Who All right. who on YouTube is giving the right message and who on YouTube is giving the wrong red pill message? Um wow, that's that's a good one. I think most everybody's given or given the right message, or ninety five percent so. Okay. Um most people in red pill are smarter than me. I'm not, I'm not like a smart guy. Um, I'm not the smartest guy. I'm not like mm-hmm. one of these geniuses. A lot of them I consider to be like genius level. So uh, most of them are smarter than me. Most of them are that some of them, many of them have bigger hearts than me. Mm-hmm. I think that the wrong message comes in. They're trying to do the right thing. Many of them are sacrificing their, their, their livelihoods. Sometimes, uh, their life, sometimes their freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, sacrificing family time, a lot of stuff to send this message. So I'm not here going to war with the, the good people within Red Pill. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I guess uh, what we'll do here is kind of recap some of the things that we um, were just discussing, but in slide form. Okay, perfect. So here is a good relationship, right? Right. Um, this is what that looks like, where you have um, men in society say, and this can be any number one through 10 or whatever. Mm. We're just saying that a 50-50 is a good relationship. Mm. Uh, it's hard to do for most men and women, but it is good. You have to be disciplined. And then moving forward, you have a great relationship where the balance is the man is slightly up, which allows her to be hypergamous and enjoy having a a good man in her eyes Mm -hmm. and also allows him to look at her as, um, as needing him. Mm -hmm. And that would make most men and women really happy. That's why that scenario is great. Then you have a bad balance of recovery and balance. And this is in a relationship or in society with the, this is the offset, right? Mm -hmm. Um, where the woman ranks higher than the man she's with. And that just makes everybody uncomfortable, right? Nobody really wants that Mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, some people do, if you have a really beat down man and a really aggressively masculine woman, they might like something like this, but most people don't. So that's kind of what we're looking at as far as that balance. Um, let me go back here. All right. So something else we talked about, I think was, oh, here, let's go here. We talked about the, the four pros, right? Yeah, correct. Um, only these four things that a, that a woman can get from a man. And, you know, it does start off with, you know, provision, right? Mm-hmm. Then you have protection, problem solving. Uh, you have procreation here at the bottom. The man and the woman are both at 100%. That's, that's also because throughout life, she's still going to chase things. Um, her form of happiness that women chase and the man is also going to chase his form of happiness. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother episode right there of what that really is because it's kind of controversial. But once she takes away, you know, um, once you give women money, which actually the act of doing that is called Rikorian trickery, um, where we've discovered that if anyone besides a woman's significant other gives her money or resources, it ruins her for a relationship. So say you have a young lady that is um, comes from a wealthy family, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe her father has a bunch of money and he keeps, 
giving her the money, paying for her to live an extravagant lifestyle where, well, the guy that she's really supposed to be with or maybe connect with um, and maybe possibly have a healthy relationship with is going to be harder. Say you're in a marriage with a woman who has a father like that. You, As the man that's married to her, you make, I don't know, 50000 a year, 75000 a year or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and her, so there's things you might not be able to afford. Or maybe you guys got together young and you make thirty, forty thousand. 40000 I don't know. But there's things you can't really afford. You can't afford to get her a house yet. You can't afford to get her that nice new car or truck she wants, right? Mm-hmm. But her father keeps stepping in, getting the car, the truck, buying the house for you guys, doing this, doing that. Mm-hmm. Your your wife or a significant other, she can't help but look at you differently. Yeah. And that you cannot do those things, right? Yeah. She can't help but feel like, you know, more respect for her father, love and respect for her father, and maybe feel like that she's on a higher plane. Mm-hmm. So it's really important uh, not to be, uh, I'm sorry, we call it Rikorian trickery. Um, even when a woman goes to work for a job or when she gets money from doing anything, mm-hmm. selling herself in different ways, mm-hmm. even on social media, that when men donate money to that, that's the biggest problem that men have. Men need to stop giving money. The same men that are out here complaining that they don't have a wife or their girlfriend won't get in alignment with them mm-hmm. are the same men putting money on um only fans or, or, you know, being a recording trick to these women. Mm-hmm. Once you stop that, things will start to straighten out. So I, we really need men to stop that. So going to the next one, uh, because they have that provision, we talked about how they take away the protection. Uh, they don't need a man's protection. So now the man's reduced to 50% and a woman's been amped up because she self-contains these things now. Mm-hmm. She's been amped up to 150. And then uh, we also discussed the problem solving um, once you take away a man's problem solving, because modern women think they can solve their own problems, right? Don't mm-hmm. need a man for that. Yeah. So now that's taken away. I mean, and these are the parts of a man. You can only get these, any woman can mm-hmm. only get these four things from a man. Mm-hmm. And as you deplete men, modern men of this, and empower that, you want to see women's empowerment, look at that 175% over there. That's empowerment, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what it's done. It's created this horrible offset between men and women. She doesn't need you to solve her problems neither. So what's really left? You have procreation, mm. sex and kids, right? Yeah. But even men get destroyed off of that. So now you have men that really aren't worth anything to them because they're the women are basically going out, right? Um, they're basically going out and, and having, um, having sex with the men that they choose. Mm-hmm. versus the men that they need to be with, right? So mm-hmm. say you have a young lady out of Michigan. Her name is, I don't know, Jessica. She goes out now, say she's a five, but on any Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the week, she can sleep with a guy who's an eight or nine just because he wants to smash. He's lonely, right? Mm-hmm. Um, girls on his level or on Instagram are flying out somewhere to Dubai, and she's sleeping with guys who are way above her level, mm-hmm. and she enjoys that. Um, she enjoys having guys she doesn't truly deserve, wants to sleep with her. She Mm -hmm. enjoys making her own money. So everything kind of takes away from her wanting to be in a relationship or in a marriage. This is the problem that we're having. Um, the next one here, we'll check into, oh, here, uh, we just talked about the history of men and women, um, and the years, right? Mm -hmm. 1920s, you know, women started working. We went through 40 years of that up into the sixties and, you know, remember the good, healthy relationship had five and five. Yeah. Well, this automatically sets this to six and four because men are worth less now that women are in the workplace. Men make less money when you put when women went to work to the workplace. An employer is not going to pay. Um, if, if the job is paying men $20 an hour to work there and then you double the workforce. Right now we have about 71 million women in the workforce, about 71 million men in the American workforce. The mm. workforce has doubled. Mm. They've achieved the goal, their goal of putting just as many women in the workforce as men. Mm-hmm. So, of course, men are going to make, it's going to chop off basically half of their work. Yeah. Well, when women look at men, they generally don't look at men for looks or even height. The primary thing that women look for is his provision. Mm. So once women are in a workplace taking that, of course, it makes men less valuable. And in her mind, it increases her value. Mm. So the 1920s did that to us. Then we move forward to the 1960s, like we discussed, it was birth control. Mm-hmm. When you get to the part about birth control, you're talking about sexual liberation, women being sent the message that 
hey, you can kind of go um, have sex with whoever you want. This is where you get the free love crap that happened in the late 60s, right? Mm. Um, free love led to um, everything, divorce, diseases, um, child support, uh, which you'll see in the future. But them having that freedom to not have to, you know, we took away shame with these moves, right? You took away shame. Mm. And once you take away shame from any human being, uh, even a woman, uh, it makes her a little wild. She's out in the streets. So now she thinks she's a seven. Men are fours. And then you move to the 1970s. As we discussed, you have now divorce and child support, um, which not only takes a woman up a notch because a lot of women uh, in society starting in the 70s, actually, actually, yeah, starting in the 70s, can live off of that. I mean, the divorce is um, what she gets from it. You, you divorce a billionaire, you're going to get at least a half a billion dollars, right? Yeah. And so it became a finesse game for women to divorce men. Uh, was really popular in the 70s and got really popular, uh, hit a real height in the 80s and really hasn't stopped. And then you talk about child support, which is just an additive, uh, additive to it. It's like a bonus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we get to this bonus stage where um, women are actually being incentivized and capitalized off destroying the lives of men and destroying their own families. Mm -hmm. this, this is crazy. And this is why we're in this situation. So then you move forward to... Um, the early 2000s, right? We discussed social media. Um, you get to the point, you know, to this point, it, it immediately takes women to nine, takes men down to two. As mm -hmm. you can see, men are just being crushed mm -hmm. in, our, in American society and in other countries. Excuse me. Men are being absolutely crushed by all of these moves. And I, I want you to notice a pattern that none of these things, at no point through all these years, the last hundred years, and anybody say, hey, this is not good for families or not good for men, and we need to change it. That is the primary indicator that tells you they're, they're not stupid. They see it going on for the last 100 years, that they want it to go on. Mm. That's, why, that's how we know that we have an enemy, a common enemy. Men and women in America and in other, other countries, we all have a common enemy. This isn't about men versus women or, or uh, women versus men. This is about there is somebody, some entity, something, that is doing this to us and they're, they're doing it. They're being very calculated. And the more they do it, the more they feel successful or that, or that they're being enriched by it. So the destruction of our families, the using of our women sexually and for their work that they do is what's being abused. And because of that, men in general, all men, no man is safe because of this. I don't care if he's a billionaire. You see what happens to billionaires. They're getting destroyed by this also. So mm -hmm. there's no level of financial income game or getting in shape that changes this. So people in Red Pill that talk about, we well, just need to get in shape, this and that, and, and make money. Dude, that doesn't solve a damn thing. That mm. solves one thing. Uh, you can go have more sex, right? Mm -hmm. But as we can see, I mean, look at all the, uh, look at Andrew Tate right now. Yeah. Um, very rich, had some sex. When you're out there having all that sex and dealing with women, it's going to come get you anyway. Mm hmm there's going to be women that are frustrated that they can't have you, that you did one night stand with them or whatever it is. And they're going to be, they're going to come after you. Chris Correct. Brown, name anybody in the public spot. You know, shit. That is I don't correct, know. Man. You know, it's, it's a down, lot. Brought down by a woman. Yeah. They're, okay. they're going to be brought down. We're in a system mm -hmm. that no matter what you, no man is safe. Every man's under attack. And that's what I really need people to understand. This is not about getting rid of masculinity. Mm -hmm. They don't care about that. They care about keeping men at bay and they're using women as the weapon I because see. women are the number one thing that mm. every man wants, you know, every straight man yeah. wants and needs. He needs a woman. He needs her for a wife. He needs her to reproduce, have children, and he wants to raise his children. Mm. And most men with, with common sense that are not mentally ill mm. want to raise their children. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't want to, you know, um, Sometimes I think about men like Future and Drake, right? Mm -hmm. And Nick Cannon, right? Um, and not to be so hip hop about it. They're just yeah, good yeah. examples because they're out there in the news. But these guys, they want wives. They really do. They just, with this going on, what we're discussing right here, with this going on, mm -hmm. you, where are you going to find one if you're one of those guys? Where are you going to find somebody you can trust yeah. which are secrets you can trust with your life, your finances, everything that's not going to tear you apart 
and do it in a celebratory way on social media degrade you and your career. It's nearly impossible. Mm-hmm. Look at everybody. I mean, all the all the greatest men are being destroyed by this right now. Fa- their families true. being torn apart. Doesn't matter if you're like we discussed uh, on another mm-hmm. podcast. Tom Brady, Kanye West. It doesn't matter if you're yeah. the best quarterback in the world or the best rapper producer in the world, the richest anything, this, that's what tells you this is a problem of monumental. Because if those guys have those problems, imagine what this is doing to the average man. No matter your status. Yeah, yeah, the status doesn't help you here. Mm. That's what I'm trying to get across to people. Status doesn't help us. So the nail in the coffin, man, was like we discussed. The 2010 dating app, Mm. that did it. Uh, And if you look at some of the stats on like Tinder and other uh, apps they did mm. like women are very selective because they get to pick and choose only the top guys yeah. top 20 percent of men top 10 percent and when those women pick and choose and try to get with those guys he knows that he can just slide through and and he's going to be able to have intercourse with her mm-hmm. um so you have like i say so there you get the situation where the young lady who's a four instead of her finding a husband that is a four or a five to make her happy and build a life with. Mm-hmm. She's very content working her job and, and having these loose sexual relationships with guys who are, she's a four. Mm-hmm. I mean, for her to feel good about herself, she just needs a guy who's a six, seven or eight. And that's what's happening. And so the guys don't really want to live like that all the time. Cause mm-hmm. as any guy knows who's had, um, good success with women or, or, you know, to have sex with, yeah. You know, a certain amount of women, mm-hmm. it gets old fast. We mm-hmm. get tired of it. Men mm-hmm. don't even want it. Um, young, thirsty boys want it. And that's why you'll see a lot of these old, washed up women and yeah, they've been through everything. Guys. Like yeah. a, <laughs> go for a younger guy every yeah. time. Like the Hollywood women are rich and famous, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. They, um, all of them. All Look of at all them. of them. They yeah, always like, go for a That's dude. true. Like Britney, uh, Bruce Willis's ex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right. Yep. All of them. I mean, they, they all go through that and, it's um this is this is pretty sickening. So that's pretty much the process we went through. This isn't the detailed numbers that we really deal with here, mm-hmm. but this is good enough for everybody to see. Not so once again, we wonder why the average woman walks around thinking and feeling like she's a ten. And that's a good All chart. You broke it why. down real 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 good. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, I really yeah. wanted you to see this. Okay. And like I say, um let's see, um here actually. Um, we, I think we talked about the Recorian a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. All right. So here's what the Recorian is very briefly. Um, it, the, the, the Recorian with the, the word the in front of it mm. is a four piece set, right? It's a total lifestyle package. Um, the first thing you do is learn how to speak Recorian. So basically what is the Recorian as a language? Recorian is the world's first love language, right? Mm. That's why a lot of the things that we talk about, or you hear me talking about, or is Recorian this, Recorian that. That is how I got to, basically, I just turned love and relationships into a programming language. That's what allows me to see so deeply. That's why I'm able to see, see the things that other red pill or love and relationship people just don't see. This is what makes me the leader and the expert. Nobody knows what I know, and it's all because when I think about love and relationships, or I work out uh, statistics, mathematics, whatever, mm. I think about it in Recorian. And so that's what I'm here to teach. I'm here to teach other people how to speak Recorian. Even if you don't speak it out of your mouth, you think it. Once you begin to think it, then you move on to, to the second part of the set, which is step two. Now you can live a Recorian lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because once you have that knowledge in your head, then it's really hard for whether you're a man or a woman. If, if you're a woman, it's hard for guys to play you and mm-hmm. cheat on you. Mm-hmm. If if you know Recorian, if you speak that in your head, you can see him coming like a mile away. Mm-hmm. You will not get played the same. Yeah. You can see through other people's uh, bullshit, so to mm-hmm. speak. Okay. And then the, the, the Recorian lifestyle is to live in that clarity. It's basically to put it in a condensed form. This is RP lenses at its maximum is what it is. Okay. That's why I'm so confident speaking about all the stuff I speak about. And knowing my position in this game, it's mm-hmm. because I know my RP lenses are is it don't get no better. There's mm-hmm. nobody who has it better. Now there's people who have different types. Um, like we we're just speaking of Andrew Tate a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, if somebody asked me, you know, who who sees the Matrix better, yeah. it's definitely Andrew over me. Yeah. He sees, and the reason I'm saying that is he sees the entire Matrix. 
he sees the because you can be red pill about different things. You can be red pill about love and relationships. You can be red pill about politics, red pill about um, money and finances. Yeah. Andrew is special. And I don't, you know, what he's going through now, I don't know. Uh, guilty, innocent. Yeah. Um, I have seen some stuff, but we can talk about that later. But basically, he's special. What makes him special is because his total matrix vision, total, is I've never seen anything like it. I don't, and because of what I know, I can really appreciate how good he actually is. He can see the entire spectrum. I can't. Yeah. I can only see. Now, if you say love and relationships, I have Andrew beat there. He cannot see what I see there. Mm. He can't see this. <laughs> he can't see as deeply, right? Yeah. So different categories for different people. Okay. Um, so we're Corian Lifestyle second. And then once we get enough people speaking, knowing this Recorian, knowing red pill law, that's what the Recorian is. Mm. It's red pill law. Yeah. This is the law. This is the law that I'm here to enforce and other people will be enforcing. Because mm. um, right now we lack leadership in law. That's what that is. It's flawless. Mm. And then you have the lifestyle. So once we get a few hundred, then thousands of people actually knowing this, getting into red pill, men and women, family. See, Recorian is family friendly. Mm. If you deal with red pill content, or not necessarily content, but the type of red pill that yeah. You couldn't get out in the streets with your wife and kids or your husband and kids and root for and vote for. You're in the wrong red pill. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it to where it's great for families and that and the American people and people around the world support it. So that's what we're actually looking for. Mm. And then if uh, so, Recorian law is when we all start to use our vote um, in politics and we get rec red pill Recorian candidates. That's coming. We're going to start getting political candidates that are red pill and. Um, my hope is that they'll be red pill Recorian and not PUAs, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, and we'll start to get those candidates. Um, for example, I mean, why do you think people vote for Donald Trump? Why do you think he won an election? It ain't because he's smart. It ain't because he's cute. It ain't, you know, it yeah. was because, and, and without, without people verbalizing it, it was an internal feeling. There were so many people, I'll say it like this. He was the closest thing we had to a red pill candidate. True. That's why they like Donald Trump. Yeah, true. He was the closest thing. Now, is he perfect? Should, does he really represent us? Eh, yeah. You know, but that's why it wasn't nothing else. And yeah. people fail to see that how important red pill is. So when you have people within our space in here being whatever they're being like, that's why I'm saying it has to stop. Because if we do this correctly, um, we'll move on to step number four uh, on this list. And that's the Recorian age of the Recorian era. That's when we start to correct all the things that we've done wrong or set forth wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're correcting uh, women feeling like they have to go to work and be a man. Now mm -hmm. we're correcting the birth control situation. They've already started to correct the abortion situation. Um, they did take a step uh, pos in a positive direction there. Yeah. Um, so that's where we start to, and the, the law, Recorian law gets us to pushing that way and then um, the recording age era will be that time, not just in American, mm -hmm. but in human history where people are the happiest they've probably ever been because none of these problems will exist. And when I say none of these problems, I'm not just talking about can you find a mate or can you be in a healthy relationship? What I'm talking about is you will see crime nearly disappear. Okay. I'm talking, and, and we saw if what we've done by numbers is we're able to look at crime numbers and how they would reduce. Mm. If you think about crime in general, any type of crime, mm -hmm. it's generally committed by some by somebody. Okay. All crime, not all, because there's mental illness. So yeah. all crime besides crime that is done by mental illness is usually done, it's called Recorian crime, right? We have a label for that too. You have to label everything in order to figure this out. Yeah. It's Recorian crime. And it's crime committed because of the need or lack of a loving relationship or being able to take care of your love relationship. Mm -hmm. Nobody steals a car that has a great life, a good job, wife at home. He's not stealing a car, right? Yeah. He's committing that crime because he's hungry, doesn't have this, doesn't have that, or he's in love and has a family and he can't support them. Crime is committed because of those situations. Mm -hmm. So once we fix this, you will see less and less crime. You will see less, most crimes or these core crimes are crimes of passion. Every crime is almost that, except for uh, crimes that are, you know, done by the mentally ill. Yeah. So we solve a lot of issues by going into uh, Recorian. Everything Recorian. It all makes sense to me.
yeah, you know, we try to make it easy. Um, like I say, I had the longest night last night because I think <laughs> we're going to be hitting 100,000 on YouTube today, man. I man. couldn't sleep. It was like Christmas. Sure. Yeah. So I think we're about, we're about Con- Congrats on that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a celebration, man. Yeah. We're about to pop bottles tonight, man. Right. Um, very hard work. Um, like I say, it's a lot. I'm exhausted. I'm out of shape. I haven't been to the gym in weeks, almost oh, really? two months. So oh, I'm man. just trying to hold. Oh, man, it's been <laughs> awful. Eating bad. Um, everything's been bad. But, um, you know, just so so happy about our progress and what we're doing. Yeah, we're 25 subscribers away, man. It's crazy. Man, okay. So you might get it in the middle of this show. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, did I show you all of these? Oh, the last one. The last one here, um, this one, uh, recording in value. And I said something, I think it was one of our shorts where I was trying to explain how men, <laughs> men don't go one through 10, right? Yeah. Uh, men actually can go. There's really to infinity, honestly. Um, a woman, you know, a man's value can go above 10 based upon mm. how successful he is, how many people he leads, how much money he has. Mm. Not the same for women. They can only be a 10. So mm. you see the most, the hottest chick you ever saw. You yeah. think she has perfect um, manners, mm. humility, nurturing. She's uh, her sweetness level is through the roof for you. Yeah. She's still only a 10. Mm. Now, what people misunderstand or what I, they don't think they misunderstand it. I didn't explain it. Women can go over 10. Okay. But the only way they can do that is to get married. Oh, okay, okay. When she gets married, right? Mm-hmm. In her, in the eyes of her husband. Remember, love is in the eyes. That's why we got, you know, some of the other charts I showed you. Yeah. It's how women view things or how men view things. So, in society's eyes, she's a ten. In his eyes, she's a ten. He marries her. Is the moment he marries her, she shoots up to a twelve because mm. now she has this value to her, to him that mm. is priceless, okay. Okay. right? Okay. He gave his commitment to her, so now she's a twelve. She has a, she has the first child. Now she's a fourteen. Uh, they've been together five years. Now she's a 16. Mm. That's how that works. And it builds over time and her effort and love for that man in that relationship. Now he can give what he has. As long as he grows within a relationship, earns more money, becomes a better man, she gets more and more over the years, right? Mm. So I'll give you a good example of this. Um, we saw Will and Jada Smith, right? Everybody's been looking at that for years now, right? Yeah, yeah. People say, well, you're Will Smith. You're, you're a big time movie star, all this money. Why don't you just find a, like, you can go have all kinds of different girls, man. Like, what is wrong with you, right? Mm. Like, your wife is 50 something years old and yeah. acting crazy. Yeah. And they call him. See, here's, here's a mistake red pill people make too. They all make videos calling Will a simp and calling yeah, Will yeah. this and that. Mm. Honest to God truth. So let me say this uh, the honest to God truth is that if you look, at the time they've been together, so say about 25 years, so say she goes up two points every five years, mm-hmm. say she was a nine or 10 in his eyes when he met her, um, so you have to put that, that math together, so it's, so what is that, 10, so she's already to a 20, how many kids they have, two, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you add all this up, you know, Jada, in, in Will's eyes, Jada's a minimum 24, but then you add all the secrets that she keeps, all the mm-hmm. times and this and that, things that he don't want people to know, yeah. you add all this together, from a man's perspective, from a long-term husband um, and father, she's irreplaceable. That's what they don't get. Um, you can go out and find another girl who's a 10, but that but that young lady will not be a 24 or 32 or 35 like Jada is to Will. He can go get three 10s. Yeah. Still don't add up. Okay. Still won't be the same. Because even if he gets three 10s, he don't have kids with him. That's true. <laughs> you know, it's... Yeah, it's it's impossible. Yeah. This is why men are so torn apart when the marriage breaks down, when a woman leaves. Mm-hmm. And the women know that. They're getting back at him for some reason because they believe. And I'll use this chart for another thing, too. Say this couple that we're looking at got together when they were both 10s, right? Yeah. So say she was a 10 when they met and he was a 10, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. As they go through the relationship, he starts to boom in his career. You know, uh, years go by. Now he's 35 years old or 40, and now he's a 50, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as long as what he gave her grew in that process, everything's usually generally fine, right? But he starts to want more. She gets more. Inside of relationships, there's something that's called Recorian view and Recorian vision. The Recorian view inside of a relationship. In the eyes of a woman, her, her husband 
this is generally, not every woman, this mm-hmm. is in general, yes. her husband loses value in the relationship. Mm. Once she marries him throughout the years, she, like say Jada looks at Will, right? Mm. Jada looks at Will like he's nothing. In her eyes, he's nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. In his eyes, she's everything. Yeah. Right. Mm. Now, now that flip that you go outside of the relationship, outside of the relationship, everybody's looking at it from the public view. And Jade and Will is everything. Why would you risk your career for her? Why are you the yeah, biggest yeah. movie star? You had all this money. Right. And Jade is nothing outside the relationship. You see how it's opposite. Yeah, I see. Inside the relationship, Jade is worth everything to him. Mm. Outside of the relationship on a sexual market. She's worth a four yeah. in the marriage. She's worth 34, yeah. but out in the street, she's worth four. Okay. A- ain't nobody going to come marry her. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. I get, I get what so, you're saying now where, it, the, where the marriage comes into play. Yeah. 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 So that pe- these are things that people just don't understand. Um, and also, Oh, the last thing on this is that when that goes up, he, he's going to need more access to women. Mm. See the price for her in a relationship is as long as she gets with the right guy or a guy with good resources, money or whatever, mm-hmm. he, she's going to get everything she wants over the course of the rest of her life. Right. Yeah. From him. Okay. What does he get? That's new. She gets the new cars. She mm-hmm. gets the new mansion. Yeah. She gets the new, you know, all the kids supported. She has mm-hmm. a pool. All her friends come over. She takes the best family pictures for Instagram or vacation pictures. Mm-hmm. She has the life that she always dreamed of. Mm-hmm. What increases for him? Okay. I'll See, women you. chase happiness. Yeah. Right. And that's where women, they're going to have to come a point where they begin to understand that it's not every man, a religious man or certain men don't want access to other women, mm-hmm. but that is truly in these situations what would be called for yeah. or dictated or deserving okay. if he needs access to more women. Okay. Because her prize, she keeps getting a prize over the years. He's yeah. not getting a and new he's wife. He's not getting anything. Yeah, right? I get you. I understand. He's that. not getting nothing. Yeah. Yeah. He has all that success and he gets nothing new. <laughs> and she's like, if you even think about, if she, most women tell their husbands, if you even think about, um, you know, being with somebody else or getting any reward for mm-hmm. your success, I'm going to divorce you. Then it's a threat. Yeah. I'm going to leave you. Yeah, yeah. So we have all that yeah. stuff. Um, so okay. that's about it on a slide. Man, all that as well. Well put. I think we got a couple minutes left. Um, but yeah, man, I appreciate you doing the show. And uh, thank you for the slides, though, too. That, <laughs> that helped out a lot, man. Man, I, I worked hard on those. I, yeah. I did that for you, man. <laughs> for sure, for sure, <laughs> man. I'm glad I actually got that versus anybody else, man. He, yeah, like it makes everybody understand more. It actually even helped me, too, because you explained it to me first without it. And then seeing it, like it jawed in even better. So, yeah, that, that's what we're trying to bring to the forefront, man. We just want to educate everybody. Um, just, you know, my goal is to save families and make it to, you know, I, I personally know, and I think you know, too, that everybody out here um, should, if they want a partner, should be able to have one. If they want a family, they should be able to have one. Uh, it keeps the, our children safe. Um, it keeps, you know, people off the street. Yeah, exactly. You know, some people choose the streets. I mm-hmm. get it. There were times in my life I chose the streets. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but um, there's, you know, uh, we, we need a new America. We're, uh, we're not doing our people right, mm. and our our government, our system has failed us. That that is what's going on. Uh, we've been failed, and they're they're not really attacking the men. They're using the women. Well, they're attacking the men, but they're using the women to do it. Yeah. The women are the ones being used, and they don't know what to do. So that's why we're here. We're gonna fix it. Um, and sure, I'm gonna sacrifice man. my life to fix it. For sure, man. I'm on your side to help you push this word, man. Let's let's get it, man. Yeah. Need to get you a show on this channel as we build, man. I'll hey, get you man. over here. I, I'm all with it, man. I like all the <laughs> ideas, man. You, you really about to do something different, man. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting, man. For sure, man. I appreciate you doing the show, man. And uh, I'm gonna keep the lookout, man. I'm, I'm definitely gonna be throwing you all over my social media, man. As soon as you hit this hundred k, probably within 24 hours, probably. Yeah, you know, we're gonna hit the hundred. We probably just hit it. Like it was 25 left. Let me look. Okay. Let me look. Yeah, yeah, it was 25 it. left, and we just. Uh, 20, 23 more subscribers so, and we'll yeah. hit 100K, man. It's <laughs> exciting. Like, yeah, what a great like day, hours. man. I got, man, we got, hey. you know, you got me on a fire podcast. You did some yeah. great scheduling here, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, this going on, this is this is crazy, man. Like, I'm um, really excited about everything, yeah. um, what we've been building. Like I say, it's hard work. Uh, I am exhausted, but it's a great exhaustion, right? Mm. Um, like I say, I come in peace. I don't want beef with everybody, but I'm ready for war. Uh, speaking about that, uh, before we get out of here, 
Um, I want to talk about Rolo Tomasi real quick. Yeah. Um, I didn't want beef with him, mm-hmm. but uh, he, he came at me with it. And here's just a good example of something he said this past Sunday on his – he has a five-hour Sunday mm. live stream that he does, right? Mm-hmm. One of the questions in the comments asked him – or they didn't even ask him a question. They, they just made a statement and said, Red Pill doesn't offer solutions. And he told that person not once but twice that we're not supposed to. Mm. And this is why people like this are not your leader. This is why. They don't think they should lead. And yes, they are cowards. Like I say, I, when I was on the, um, on the Soshcast, you know, I gave the guy props mm-hmm. for everything he's done within Red Pill and being one of the legends in the game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and while I was on, <laughs> while I was on the podcast, right? He's in the comments tearing me apart. Mm. Um, I didn't understand it. I didn't find out till after the show. Um, uh, one of two of my uh, staff members brought it to my attention. Rolo Tomasi's in the comments tearing you apart, saying all this different stuff. I mean, I couldn't understand it, man. I just gave him props on the show. Mm. So he let me know then that that he wanted it with me, and he can get it. I love it, right? But he has not kept my name out of his mouth since. New mm. Year's Day, mm. I forgot what I was doing. Uh, he had a New Year's special, uh, seven, eight people on his live. Okay. Here comes my name again. And he, ten- he tends to do this with uh, me and Pearl, right? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Just pearly things. He, mm-hmm. he does a lot of bashing of mm-hmm. us. He doesn't see her value within the space. Mm. Um, I see her value within the space. Yeah. I know uh, what she's doing. Um, she's very valuable to us. Mm. I know what she's bringing. So um, she's bringing new audiences, uh, massive attention. She's uh, she's a female, um, and she's and she's a Caucasian female, and yeah. that helps our space out. Yeah, for sure. He doesn't see that. He wants it to be a boys' club of bitching and complaining, and those days are over. So I didn't put Rolo on that list, but yeah, Rolo's got it with me now. You know, I get we got a uh, he wants that smoke. I, I let's bring it. You know, um, so and he just keeps repeating. You know, repetitively doing that. What is it that, um, that he doesn't like that, you, you're, that you're saying? About me or Pearl? Uh, you. Like, what is it he doesn't like that you're pushing? I don't know. He says that, he says I'm low quality. Hmm. <laughs> huh. That's what he said when mm-hmm. he, he went on the podcast and Adam asked him, like, what's the problem, right? Mm-hmm. Rolo, one, one part of his statement was that I was low quality or low quality, maybe even as a guest. Now, I'll. I can get with him on that. You know, I was not the best guest on Adam's show my first time out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm real about it. I got some improvement to do as far as being a uh, public figure or a social media person. It's just not me, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm learning. Um, but for him to be like that, bro, it, it that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. And, and it's not just his thing with me because I can basically take that. What it really boils down to is, if people like him are considered to be the leadership in our space, but every time we get good new rookies come in, good new players, elite, elite players, people with new ideas, every time they come in, you, you, you uh, try to go to war with them and get them out of space. You tarnish mm-hmm. their name. Mm-hmm. How can we move forward and do what's right for our people, yeah. uh, for, for red pillars worldwide or for the American people or people in other countries? You can't do that with people like that who are too, too much of a coward to claim the leadership. Yeah, at the same time, want to keep us in this uh, in this wild west circus that is currently red pill. Mm. That has to stop. It has to end. And so Rolo, I now see as part of the problem on his uh, live stream a few days ago, it was five hour. One of the things he said was about outdated science or technology. And what's so funny about this is I am the guy with the highest level of science and technology in this. Mm. It is me, and it's very clear. And it's about to, it's going to be very clear. I haven't made it clear yet to the world. Uh, hopefully, you know, your podcast is a part of that. Yeah, for sure. uh, coming out to the world is what we're trying to do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this should be big for all of us. And I'm, I'm willing to share this with everybody. But anybody within our space who is causing division and trying to keep us from achieving our agenda, those are the people I'm talking about. Those are the people that have to go. So Rolo's definitely on that list. 
his technology is outdated anyway. He sits there every day, talk about the same thing over and over, and he mm-hmm. just complains about people mm-hmm. constantly. And there's a long list. It's not just me and Pearl. There's a whole bunch of other people. I would lose all of my breath trying to explain it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he's not he's not right for us. Um, I appreciate what he's done for this space, but we have to move forward. Yeah. Um, so he's one of those people. Um, some people, other people, gain popularity within our space, like Andrew and others, mm-hmm. Kevin. Um, and they're not, uh, some of them are not operating under Recorian law. Mm-hmm. Kevin wasn't. Um, there's still some debate because Mediocre Tutorial said that Kevin didn't really consider himself to be red pill. Mm. Um, if you don't, then come out and say it yeah. because now, right. If Kevin, if you weren't red pill, you should have said it because everybody took you as red pill. Right. And you yeah. took the fame and money that came along with being one of us, but you were saying the wrong thing. Like, like I tell people all the time, you know, I, we really have to correct his high value man thing. Mm. He created this thing in the minds of men and women all around the world. Yeah. That high value man is a thing when it comes to love and relationships. And it's simply not. Mm. That's what the Recorian is. Recorian stands for the meaning of it is in the context of love and relationships. Yeah. When you look at high value man outside of love and relationships, mm. yes, what Kevin said was right. Um, high value man is a guy with a lot of money, a lot of network, can help people around him, community. That's not what it is in a relationship. Um, you know, oh, um, young lady working down at McDonald's, uh, she's 20, 26 years old mm. and she makes about 12 bucks an hour. Um, she doesn't need an NBA player. She doesn't need Drake. You that know, is true. she doesn't that is need, true. right. She's, she, she doesn't necessarily need the top lawyer. Mm. She might need the guy who's been at McDonald's for eight to 10 years and mm. he makes about 20 something an hour and they, hit it off and they can mm. build a life together and build something. And maybe one day they own their restaurant together. Mm. That's high value. If she's a four, she needs a five. If she's a two, she needs a three. Okay. Not she's a five and needs a 10, 11, 1300 yeah. because all she's going to do is it's a mess. Yeah, she's either going to, she's either going to get used by that man or cause they keep, that's what our women are mm. doing now. They're all chasing top guys yeah. and they're just getting run through. It's so disgusting. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. But, um, they're either going to get used by him or if that man does decide to settle, because I've done that before myself. Mm. If he does decide to settle for a woman who's that low to him, what's he going to end up doing? He's going to end yeah. up so-called cheating. Yeah. Right. And um, so it's a disaster either way. It just doesn't work. And speaking of cheating, I, w- I want to say something, uh, you know, not really groundbreaking to some people. Mm. But when, when women do things, when women commit crimes, or Recorian crimes, right? Because mm. I wanted to explain this on the podcast also. Huh. How do I say it? Women don't commit crimes physically, okay? Mm-hmm. The main thing men want is physical, is the physicality of a woman. That's not the main thing women want. Like, like we all know and talk about, women mainly want the resources, yeah. the money. Mm-hmm. So they give up their physicality for it. They sell it for it, a lot of them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All relationships are transactional, no matter what any, when, no matter what anybody ever tells you. Mm-hmm. Every single relationship between men and women on this earth is transactional. Yeah. A woman's not going to sleep with a guy that she doesn't feel the transaction with in any way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when women cheat, and I know this is hard for a lot of people to wrap their head around it, it's not physically. We put so much emphasis on treating women like men in this equality state that we don't understand it. When she cheats, it's financial. Mm. every time if you're if you're a man and a woman in a relationship you're a man that has a woman that works every time she walks out the door and goes to work she's cheating on you mm. that's how this really works and these okay. are the hardcore red pill truths that nobody wants to face yeah. when a man cheats it's physical he wants women that's the overall what he wants there was a stat that they put out recently 85 percent of what a man sees in his and women is the beauty. That's what we want. That's not what women want. Women mm. want the resource. They want the bag. They want the provision. Yeah. So to act like her cheating physically is the same as him, completely, totally different thing. Mm. That's why when a woman makes, say they got together, he made 50000 a year, she made nothing. He was taking care of her. They were living. Then she goes out, gets a career. She's really hot. 
So she gets a career and a boss at the job. The guy hires her just on how hot she is. He keeps wanting to be with her, or sleep with her. He makes he makes it to where she earns seventy thousand a year. Her mm. her boyfriend, her husband, still earns fifty. Guess what? She doesn't have to have intercourse with someone to now view her boyfriend or husband as lesser. Mm. And maybe she starts to think she can do better. Mm. And then she starts to look because women are prone to leadership and masculinity and power. She starts to look at her boss differently, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a, now she has a physical affair because the cheating for her starts financial. When women cheat, it's financial. I need every man on planet Earth to know that. It's not about her going and sleeping with somebody else. It's about the money she receives or the money that you lose mm. or you cannot give to her. That's what it always boils down to when it comes to that cheating, just like female crime. Uh, abuse in relationships, right? We have, we always hear about how men abuse, men abuse because people are constantly focused on the men are physical, right? Um, men were put here to control the physical world of planet Earth. That's why we're big, strong. We lift rocks. We build stuff. That's men. They're physical. They're here to dominate the physical world. Women are here to dominate the emotional world. And that's why women have so much power. When wars get fought, it's usually be <laughs> to do with women when those, when men go build those big buildings there's a woman behind it mm. you know um behind every great man is a great woman she controls the emotional world um will smith didn't smack chris rock that night right yeah jada did yeah it's her power that. yeah she's the emotion behind it right sure. so that's good no no i agree with you go ahead yeah so so that's really what we're dealing with so when you look at abuse in relationships um, cause somebody was in my comments last week, I think on Instagram mm. talking about how women leave abusive relationships. I can understand that. We mm. all understand that. We've yeah. all seen, you know, horrible situations where that was going on. But at the same time, what we fail to understand or bring attention to is the fact that not most or average men, even the abusers don't just wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be abusive to my woman physically. Yeah. And they don't just come home from work just saying they're going to do that. And, and just thinking that way and then going through that process. We're all choosing to lie and listen to lies when really, in most of these cases, most of these cases, it's the, emo- the emotional abuse that we don't put any weight to. Mm. Emotional abuse is horrible. And when a man goes through that, you, you see, even back to Jaden and Will, you can see his destruction yeah. emotionally. Yeah. He's been putting him through all types of hell for years. It has torn that man apart. It isn't even about her cheating thing. He probably could have just got over that where she physically cheated. It's really the emotional damage, the constant messing with his head, making him feel less than a man, degrading him. This is what a lot of women do in relationships because remember, once again, we now live in a society where they don't have to respect men at all, Mm. can treat men like crap and don't need them. So then she emotionally abuses him, sometimes for weeks, sometimes for months, sometimes for years. And it's this that we're failing to see. We're failing to see and prosecute female crime. Mm. We prosecute male crime. Yeah, so do. if there's a great, we say, oh, it was physical. It's a male, it's a, it's a, it's a physical crime. He needs to go to jail or prison. If it's a physical abuse, anything physical that men do, we punish, we prosecute. But when women commit their crimes, which are all emotional, generally, right? Mm. And, and general, nothing is prosecuted. They can even bring fake charges endlessly on endless men. And we, even when found out the charges are fake, not, not face prosecution in most cases. So we have a real problem on our hands. And why am I saying that? I'm not saying that to get at women this and that. The reason I'm saying that is, and this is very important, if you stop the, phys- the, the emotional abuse within relationships and households, mm. I, I got a feeling you'll see a very dramatic decrease in physical abuse, right? Yeah. Like I say, they're connected. These aren't guys that just wake up and start beating on people. Mm -hmm. Usually it comes from something that was said or something that was that they've been going through. Right. Um, And I'm talking about just in those cases. So to keep women and families safe and to keep men out of having legal trouble and out of jail and prison, Mm. that's what we need to tackle. You need to tackle emotional abuse, making it extremely illegal in a lot of settings. Yeah. When if it comes out of a wife or girlfriend's mouth, 
something so highly disrespectful that it that it leads somebody to be that way, we don't keep putting a Band-Aid on what happened. Mm -hmm. You look at the cause and you fix it. And that's what we're not doing. Everybody's behind. But um, I'm not. I'm not confused at all about none of this. And uh, we need to fix it all. And you got the right message, man. I hope everybody gets gets this, man, right. gets on board. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're trying to get there, man. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, and we talk endlessly. I, I think, you know, um, this was a great interview. I'd love to come back on your show, man. Yeah, for sure. For um, sure. As we move <laughs> forward and build, I like to be yeah. a regular regular customer over here, man. It's just yeah. a very comfortable environment. And we have a lot more to cover. And there's going to be a lot more different things to talk about as we move forward, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's just awesome. Um, and I, I'm excited today. So you have to excuse me. I can't stop smiling. Um <laughs> You know, just everything going on. It's moving so yeah. fast. Like I say, we September first, right? I yeah. Tell people that to move so quickly. Man, that's, that's uh, the best very I can say. Is, yeah, it's, it's pretty fast, man. It's, but it's quality over quantity. Yeah. Somebody on YouTube comments a few days ago. He says, "Boy, <laughs> he said you sure have a lot of subscribers for somebody." He said, "I had forty minutes of uh, footage." Subscribers <laughs> say you have a lot of forty minutes of footage. And I, I did respond back to that comment, and I said, "Yeah, it's uh, quality over quantity." Yeah, yeah. You know, um, we're we're about quality for the people over here, and there's so many men and women that are suffering right now. I wanted to do something special for everybody right before Christmas because I know a lot yeah. of people, because of what's going on, because of the recording offset, yeah. a lot of people are alone right now during the holidays. You know, mm -hmm. or they were during the holidays, mm -hmm. and that can be a time where people hurt themselves or self delete themselves. So. It's a tough time, but, you know, for anybody watching, just understand we are going to fix it. It is, it is going to be fixed. Um, the long-term fixes will, yeah, those are going to take like 15, 20 years because you have to go through a generation to cleanse everything, cleanse everything out. Yeah. Um, and under what we're trying to do, um, you know, people will still have the freedom to do what they want. If you want to be a working woman, you'll be able to be a working woman. Mm. But for the young ladies who want to be a real woman, a real housewife, we're going to have opportunities for you to be that. For the, for the men who want to be real men and have a real family, we're going to create those opportunities again. Because if you look around right now, it's hard to accomplish. Uh, if a young lady's not in the streets promiscuous, twerking and selling herself or working for some company, she says she's kind of bullied these days. And yeah. that's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Why are you bullying our young ladies into being men, into, being, uh, into prostituting themselves? Mm. That's not the American way, and I'll, I'll give my life to see it change. So that's what we're doing. Let's fight, baby. I'm on board, man. We're going we gonna to make this a regular. All we need is another set of uh, right? just uh, goals and questions. Hey, at least man. once I'm a quarter. Send, yeah, for sure, man. I'm, I'm going to send, send you a list, man. And then uh, as soon as you get it done, man, we'll, we'll get it back on video again. Appreciate you doing the show. Man. For sure, for Catch sure. Catch you guys man. on the next one. All right, man. Appreciate you. See you in a minute. All right, thanks.